Hi and welcome to the second part of this series. Now we're going to go through edge detection. So we're going to apply a filter and if you don't know how to do that, check the first video out. So we're going to apply a filter to find different edges in the image. We're going to calculate the magnitude of those edges and also the direction of them. So let's get started. So as you saw in the previous video, you can have a big matrix that you use for your operations or you can have a vector. For simplicity, we're going to use a vector now. So these are the orange ones and the green ones are two different kind of filters that you use for edge detection. As you see, they have something in common. On one side, they have negative values and on the other side, they have corresponding positive values. The reason for that is because we want to see a change in the image. And you know what the change in the image also can be named as? Yes, the derivatives. Another name for derivatives is also the gradient. So these filters are also called derivatives of gradients. So they actually check the difference in the image based on intensity values. And intensity values are basically the pixel values. So let's say that this is our image that we're going to check today. It's very basic, so in a real image you will base not have 0, 10 and hundreds only as values, but we do this for simplicity. So we can see that there are different values here. We have 100, 10, and then we see that 100 goes down like this. So we can see here with our eyes that, oh, there is probably an edge here, right? Going down as a staircase. Uh, but a computer can see that. But we're gonna make it. Okay, so uh, this filter, uh, for fun, it might be fun to know that it's called the Sobel operators. But we're gonna just use the normal, like gradient and derivatives, as simple as possible. So, this change um, and this change uh, will see the difference in y and a difference in x direction. This one will see the change in y direction. So it's a derivative of y of the picture. And this one will be the derivative of x in the picture. Uh, it's a bit confusing because this one stands up. Uh, so it looks a little bit like it might be in the y direction. But what it actually looks at if an, um, an edge is on the x axis. And this one looks if there's an edge in the y direction. So we're going to apply them first the dy on the image and then we're going to do the dx of the image okay and in last video we also talked about padding so now we're going to pad out our image with with the border pixels right um okay so we just basically move up all the borders and on the sides as I said in the previous video, there's a lot of different ways of doing it. You can mirror the image, you can pad out the borders, you can pad them out with zeros. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways. So let's start with dy. So basically the change in the y direction. And we apply this filter for it. So we basically take this filter and we apply it on the first first pixel in our image, right? So now we're going to take 0, minus 0, and then we're going to take 0, and <laughs> see the difference there, which is uh, 0, yeah. So we're going to put 0 here as the first pixel value. Then we move to this pixel. So this will gonna going to be the middle pixel here. And then we see on the side we have minus 1 times 0, and then we add 10 times 1. So here we're going to have the number 10. And then we move our kernel, so the pixel 10 will be our middle pixel, right? So then we take minus 1 times 0 plus 100 times 1. 100. And then we continue doing it like that. 
So we move the operator to the pixel 100 here. That will going to be our middle pixel. So we take 10 times minus 1 plus 0 times 1, which is going to be minus 10. Then we move it over here, so this will be our middle pixel. So we take um, 100 times minus 1, and then we add 0 times 1. So this will be minus 100. So then we take our kernel and move it down here. So this will be our 0, pi our zero pixel there. So we continue this. Okay, so now we calculated the change in the y direction. And now we're going to do the same, but for x direction. So now we apply this filter. In the same manner, we start with this pixel that's going to be our middle pixel here. So it will basically be uh, minus 1 times 0 plus 1 times 0. 0, uh, and you can see that here the change will not be different. So we can actually already put 0, 0, 0, 0, because we can see that these will take each other out all the time. And if we actually move down one more, we can, if we look at these pixels, we can see that they will take each other out as well, because the values are the same. So we can actually just write 0, 0, 0, 0 here. But on this uh, level, it's actually going to be a little bit more interesting uh, if we put this pixel as our middle pixel. Uh, here it's still going to be 0, 0 times minus 1 plus 0 times 1. Here, uh, the first change will occur. So this is good. This is going to be 10 here. Um, there we have 10. Then we're going to have um, minus 1 times 10 plus 100 times 1, right? So we're going to have 90 there. Um, yeah. And then these will be the opposite of each other. It's 100 there and 10 there. So we have minus 90. And then we have a 0 again. And then we go down. This row is just 0. So we can assume that everything will be 0 here, right? No change. But let's go to the pixel 10. Okay, so we will have minus 1 times 0 plus 100 times 1, right? 100. And then we just continue doing this for the whole image. Okay, so now we calculated dy and we have d di <laughs> dx. So we have the change in y direction and we have the change in um, x direction. So what do we want to do now? Uh, what we want to calculate is the magnitude. So the magnitude will be the dx squared times dy squared. So now we can see how big the change actually is in the image, right? Okay, so... Well, these every, everywhere where there is a zero, um, it's basically going to zero out, right? So we, we can do that. So what do we do now then? Um, let's go to this pixel here. So it's going to be uh, 10 squared times 10 squared. And then we're going to take the root out of that. So we're going to have 100 here. Then we move to the next step. So we're going to have 100 here squared times 90 squared and then the root out of that, which is going to be 9000. Then we move here. It's going to be minus 90 squared times 10 squared and the root from that. And then we continue filling out the blanks. Right? Okay, so this uh, pic 
picture shows the magnitude of the two different um, on the di two different directions basically and it looks a little bit funny now because we have such a small image that we have chosen to work with um, but what it do it it does show um, the change here right uh, in directions so if we would have a much bigger image it would make more sense but now at least you know how to calculate it um, and on my github you will be able to use the Sobel operator and what it does is actually take instead of these it takes these um, operators and then it actually calculates the y direction the x direction and then do the magnitude and what you will have as your output picture will be the magnitude so you can see how that looks like it will amplify the changes in the image and another thing you can do which is interesting if you for example want to do segmentation later on your image and the segmentation will show you not only edges but also which edges are together uh, in an image so if we for example would have a car i'm sorry for drawing really ugly and then we might have some kind of football here um, and the sun here yeah i'm still sorry for <laughs> drawing ugly uh, our operators will show all of these different edges, right? Uh, maybe there's even something, a bigger ball behind it that crosses the image here. What we will be able to do with next step is calculate, you know, all the directions of the angles. So we will be able to understand that, okay, this object behind the car is probably together with this object and those lines are going in the same direction here all the time with just a slight change so that should be one object okay so that gives us more information about the image so how do you do that um okay i think my paper is a bit messy now but uh i hope you remember a little bit of geometry uh so if you have a point here and your new point, so the change is here, you could draw a little triangle here, right? So you want to know the uh, angle of change, right? So what you can do is we have the adjacent side here, right? This is our change in Y. And we have our change in x here, right? dx. So if we use the inverse of tan, we can actually make use of both of these sides. Right? So we take the, agen I <laughs> the opposite uh, and side divided on the adjacent side. And this will give you the angle. And that is exactly what we're going to do here. So let's calculate the angles. So what you're basically going to do is just take the pixel value of the y, divide it on the corresponding pixel of the x, and put it in your inverse tan formula. That will give you the angle, right? So you calculated 0, 0 will just you can divide on zero, so it's going to be null if you actually put it in a calculator. We're just going to put zero here. Okay, so we can already take away all the zeros. Much easier calculation. And yes, it is a stupid picture, but we're just here to learn how to actually do the calculations right. Okay, so now it's going to be interesting. So we put in... 10 divided on 10 in our tan formula. This is going to give us a 45 degree angle. So we put it in. Um, and then we're going to take 100 divided on 90, which will give us a 48 degree angle. 
we're going to do the same with 10 divided on 19, which is going to give us a 6 degree angle. These are approximations, uh, it's not, it basically have more values into it, so it's not a perfect division. Anyhow, we continue. Here it's also 45 degrees. Here it's going to be uh, 0 and 45. Um, 10 divided by 90, we have 6 again. 100 divided on 90, it's going to be 48 again. And 45. So we will have edges here, right? There. Which will correspond to our gradient image here with our different angles. Um, so with these calculations, you will easily be shown how the edges are in the image for uh, dy, for dx, for the magnitude, and for the angles. Okay, cool. So now you know how to use this uh, Sobel filter and the normal derivative filter. Uh, and if you want to check that out on your images, the link here below is to the GitHub where the code is uploaded and yeah, don't forget to subscribe if you like this tutorial videos. Thank you for listening.